welcome to Killer Trait. This is a um, Yandere Game Jam game, I think. Um, this music is not what I expected when loading this up for the first time, but I'm kind of excited to play this, like a lot, a lot. So let's get started. What time is it? It's 7.30 a.m. Okay, still good. Thank God I set my alarm yesterday. Properly, this time. No matter how much I want to, binge w watching anime so late into the night isn't a very good idea when I have to wake up early. Oh, I used to do that all the time in high school. I'd get like three hours of sleep. <laughs> Well, not every night, at least. As soon as I give up my limbs a- Give up? What? As soon as I give my limbs a good stretch, I check the notification on my Hoodle calendar. Oh, like Google? Is that what? <laughs> Hoodle? Big day at work. Get up. Super early. My lips form a smile. Once I finish brushing my teeth, I get dressed and grab my satchel. Wait, I'm missing something. I give a quick glance around the room until I find what I'm looking for right on top of my desk. Is it your phone? Here you are, you little rascal, you. I pick it up. It reads, input your name. Row, <laughs> like the fish eggs. Choose your pronouns. Uh, let's go with they then. This identification and card certifies that Roe Darby, who uses they them pronouns, is commissioned by the Silvering Police Department as a criminal profiler for the province of Cedarbury. Interesting. Okay. Heh. <laughs> soon, very soon, there will be a completely new word written on this ID. Just you wait. I love it when games have good sound design. I really do. I really love it. All right, let's do this. But first things first. I can't start the day without a good breakfast. And I forgot I ran out of food. Ugh. Man, I love living by myself, but having to buy groceries constantly is such a pain in the ass. I agree. I hope that one day online delivery evolves to such an extent that everything you buy gets teleported right into your kitchen. Doesn't hurt to dream, right? Anyway, not much I can do in the grasp of reality. I guess I'll just grab something at a coffee shop or whatever. Hmm. Are there any good ones nearby? I haven't had much of a chance to visit any food establishments since I moved to this neighborhood. I take out my phone from my jacket and start browsing cafes with decent hoodle reviews. Bro, I love cafes. I love going to cafes. Especially if I get a chai tea and the chai tea actually tastes good. Because some places it doesn't taste good. Like Dutch Bros, it's not the greatest. It's a little bit better if you get a caramelizer one. Let's see here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of obsessed with Dutch Bros. Oh fuck, what day is it? It's Monday. Okay, never mind. They have a sticker day every first Wednesday of the month. <laughs> I go. Every first Wednesday. Cup of coffee. Is it a bear themed one? 4.5 stars. 11.95 reviews. 11.95. Good. Good brain power today. I mean, I did just wake up and get dressed and then immediately came in here wearing a long sleeve shirt of all things in the middle of summer i never heard of this one before maybe it's relatively new it does seem like a nice enough place and the food looks cute which is always a great in my book yeah i'm sold keys in hand i walk to the door so we got enough time to get noms and head out Uh, 
Unlike the last couple of days, which were constantly threatened by the heavy rain forecast, this morning is bright and sunny. There's a breeze in the air. Guess the storm passed right through instead of gracing us with its presence. Cute. I walk along the road of Golden Meadows, slowly but surely getting closer to my destination. Well, at least according to Hoodle Maps. I don't usually head this way when I go to work. My brain is usually in auto mode in the mornings, especially if I need to get somewhere quick. Like, well, my job, <laughs> if you'll forgive the repetition. But maybe I should reconsider changing my route from time to time. For such a bustling city, this park is pretty chill. I don't think I've seen more than a few joggers and one or two people walking their dogs. Still, why is it called Golden Meadows? Wouldn't it make more sense to call it Silver Meadows, given that we're in the Silvering City and all that jazz? The trees don't even get that golden during fall. Yeah, I definitely need some coffee. I'm already thinking about random shit like this. Two blocks of walking later, my journey has come to an end. You've arrived at your destination. I close Hoodle Maps and enter the cafe. I think that the writing so far needs an editor. Not because there's spelling mistakes, but because... I don't want to explain to you what a book editor does, but it needs an editor. In my opinion. In my opinion. This is just the demo. The distinct smell of coffee hits me straight away. Several pastries can be seen near the register too. It's not that big a place, but it isn't small either. In fact, the size is just right. It adds to the coziness. Well, that's good. I hate it when they're too small, when cafes are too small. Like when they have like a big huge crowd, but there's like six tables and 70 people in the store. Oh my God, it's, it's the worst. <laughs> I glance down at the pictures and the reviews once again. They're certainly eye-catching, but they don't do it justice. It really goes without saying, there are some things in life that are better to see for yourself. Hey, welcome. The warm greeting from the cashier brings me right back to Earth. Ah, cutie matutie appears. The name's Arthur. What will you be having today? Oh, hi. I <laughs> There's just some, like, slightly odd tendencies that the writer has. And could do with somebody asking, like, why, how, um, what is the purpose of this, that kind of thing, just so that they, there's more in-depthness to the writing. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. <laughs> and I hope I don't sound like just an asshole. I'm trying my best not to just be a jerk and to just actually give constructive feedback. Oh, hi. Sorry, I was a bit distracted. First time? Guess it was too obvious, huh? Arthur laughs. I'm kind of tempted to ask him why he's wearing a coat like that. Like a laboratory coat falling off his shoulders? Like, like what? Wait, no, I'm confused. <laughs> Like, that it's falling off, or like, how the coat is? What can I say? You're not the only first timer to get lost in thought as soon as they enter. Scratch that, why is he wearing one in the first place when he works indoors? Wouldn't a sweater make more sense? It's fashion, baby. <laughs> but to be fair, I do try to make this place look as charming as possible. Oh, are you the owner? Maybe it's a new trend. Moving on. Let's actually be part of the conversation row. Wow, do you own this place? Yep, right on. That's really cool. I don't know many cafes where you see the owner on the job. You work here by yourself, Arthur? I do have another employee who bakes sometimes, but he mostly hand del handles deliveries when he's not at his other jobs. Eh, it's not a big cafe, so I don't have to worry too much. I see. Well, that was weird. Does his employee have a strange side job or something? 
Yeah, why are we having this conversation? Do they also wear their coat like Arthur here? Bro, get over the coat. Anyway, sorry, I was just trying to make small talk, but got a bit sidetracked. Are you ready to order? Oh, right. That's why I came here in the first place. Lol. Lol. Hmm, let's see. I glance at the menu hanging by the wall. Apart from coffee, tea, and juice, there seems to be a moderate variety of pastries and a few savory options. A latte bears, bear cappuccino, a blueberry pie, teddy bear roll, hamburger, Bernard's, Bernard's couple tea. Someone here is really fond of bears and puns, and it's hilarious. Also, who the hell is Bernard? I'm having a bit of trouble deciding. Do you have any recommendations? First things first, do you happen to be vegetarian or vegan? Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm good with anything. I used to be vegetarian, but uh, I went on a road trip and did not plan accordingly. I had to eat. So I lost my vegetarian badge, but I do still eat mostly. Um, Vegetarian. God, my brain is not on yet. I'm good with anything. It's nice to see you have more options, though. Right on, right on. And this... Is this here or to go? To go. Hopefully this gives me the energy boost I need. Ah, is it an important day? You could say that. <sighs> Arthur smiles and nods. Give me five. Arthur heads towards the machine, a few steps from the register, and in no time starts grinding some coffee beans. When he's done with that, I see him grab what looks like a milk frother, and it's then that I realize he's making a latte. Once there's enough foam, Arthur raises the froth milk to a relatively high position and begins pouring it into a paper cup. The more the cup gets filled, the lower he steeps his hand, until there's nothing left to pour. Finally, he covers the latte with a lid and grabs a pastry from the glass display. Thank you for waiting. Aw, cute. Here's our takeaway latte cub. If you need an energy boost, this will do the trick. The latte Arthur gives me has an adorable sticker with the logo of the cafe on the top of the cardboard sleeve. Guess this little one is Bernard. Aw, cute. Cub of coffee. It really is a very fitting name. Aw, is that a little bread? And this is one of our most popular pastries, the Berry Big Bun. Oh. The Triple B. It's filled with custard. Ooh. Much like its name, the bun is shaped like a bear. I would eat the ears first, I'm gonna be honest. A Berry Big Bear. Like, how Berry Big? <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. These look so good, I can't wait to try them. Glad to hear it. Have a good day now, won't you? A very good day. Haha. <laughs> I definitely will now. See ya. Arthur raises a hand in farewell as I exit the shop. That took a little longer than I thought, but it's okay. It doesn't hurt to have a little push once in a while. I take out my phone to check the time. 8.30? Holy shit, I'm gonna be late. Uh, this MC is, uh, is a menace. <sighs> God, I'm dying. Note to self, don't run while trying not to spill any coffee or any of your belongings for that matter. Actually, don't run when going to work, period. Thank God this lid is tougher than a fucking marmalade jar. Ugh. Well, at least I won't be late now. Still, it's kind of a miracle that I didn't bump into anyone. Ruby Road is a pretty, is pretty crowded today. Little bun. While waiting for the streetlight to change, I take a look at my berry bun. That chunkiness. That shine. It's like it's calling to me. Okay, if you look at me like that, I guess I'll have to take a bite. Hey, you! Get out of the way! Uh, okay. What? 
I see a bicycle, bicycle, a bicycle approaching, a bicycle approaching. Ah! <laughs> Ugh. What the? No! The berry bun died. Oh! <laughs> it's a come to a bicycle's wheel. Okay. Oh my fucking god, you've got to be kidding me. That voice. I turn around and spot the identity of the bear bun murderer. Trigger happy human. Okay. He hasn't fared much better. The delivery backpack he was carrying has spilled some of its contents, too. How in the hell did my latte survive, but not these? The guy glares at me. Bro. Chill out. Why is it my fault? Why the fuck didn't you move when I told you to, dumbass? Excuse me? Fuck this guy, get mad. Hell yeah. You got some nerve, asshole. Huh? What the fuck did you call me, dipshit? Asshole, shithead, douchebag, need I go on? How's it my fault when it was you who wasn't paying attention? Funny coming from someone who was lost in fucking La La Land! He's so mad. I wasn't even crossing the street. You still need to be aware of your surroundings. That's my line! We continued glaring at each other for a few moments. Whatever. I don't have time for this bullshit. What? The guy retrieves the spilled contents from the ground and puts them away in his delivery backpack before hopping onto his bike once again. <sighs> Arthur's gonna fucking kill me. Damn it all. Sayonara, dipshit. Hope I don't see your ass wandering this street again. What are you gonna do? Beat me up? I'll beat you up, bitch. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm so intimidating. I make sure to show him the middle finger before he leaves. Nice. God, it's not like me to lose my temper to this extent. But he just pushed all of my buttons. Hopefully no one from work saw that. I throw the wrecked bear bun in a nearby trash can. It's a shame. But I'll just buy another one later. Buy another bear bun. A very big bun. Whew, I made it. Barely. It's almost 9 a.m. Well, at least I'm not late. Cool. After taking the elevator and walking down the third floor hallway, I arrive at the office of the Criminal Investigations Department. Close call, Aero. I almost thought you wouldn't make it. Not like you. Not like you. Blood ran cold or something? What? Not like you, not like you. Like a, not like you, not like you. That's the only way I can think of that, how that's supposed to be read, but I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe I'm dumb. <laughs> well, it ran cold or something? As if, I just got breakfast somewhere else and it was a bit crowded. Whatever helps you sleep at night, kitty. Kitty? Kitty! Kiddo! Damn it, brain. Hang in there. Oh, shut up, Carl. He laughs. Anyway, Ro, hate to cut the conversation short, but I need to take care of some really important business. Okay. Carl puts a hand on his chest in feigned shock. Come on, kiddo. You're not even gonna ask what? Oh, for the love of... No. Patience, bro. Remember, today's special. Sure, Carl. What's this important business? It's confidential. I have a strong urge to throw my monitor so that it conveniently lands on his head. Nah, <laughs> you should see the look on your face. Fuck you, Carl. Nah, well, I guess I can tell you. He gets up from his seat and approaches me with his hand closed to his mouth as if he's about to reveal a secret. You know, David from the second floor? The engineer? Yeah, 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 him. Turns out, 
He bought the wrong SD card for the surveillance cameras at the detention center. And do you know this how? Carl grins. I happened to arrive early and saw him panic on the phone, probably talking to his partner or something. The thing is, guy was scared shitless, going off about how the cams wouldn't go full at any moment. Oh, would go full at any moment. About how he could lose his job. Which, to be fair, yeah, he could. Can't he go buy a replacement? Nah, he, he's got to check the CCTV cams from the latest crime scene, kiddo. Bro, stop calling me kiddo, what the fuck? Who says kiddo that much? Oh, now that you mention it. But anyway, he said he'd replace them tomorrow morning without fail. Again, you know this how? He gives me a knowing smile. Really, Carl? 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 You could get turned in for this. What makes you think I won't say anything to the boss? Oh, kiddo. David's not the only one I've got dirt on. Wearing a tri triumphant smile, Carl turns away and goes back to his seat. How long has Carl been working in this department again? He's one of the people who's been here the longest, right? He's not even that much older than me and the others, and yet everyone call he calls everyone kiddo. Well, except for our division's boss and the chief of police. I can never tell if he's blackmailing if his blackmailing schemes just show or if they're the real deal. How the hell did someone like him become a police officer? Yeah, for real. That's what I was just wondering. Whatever. I get to my own work area right next to the pile of boxes. Maybe you should go tell David? Someone should really take these away. Why are they still so... Why are there still so many paper files? Just digitize everything. We're in the 21st century for Pete's sake. Ugh. No, now's not the time to vent your frustrations on a massive cardboard row. Right as I turn on my monitor, I hear the unmistakable laugh of my superior. Aslan? Ro, my dear partner. I thought... Superior. Okay. Morning, boss. Ugh, no, I stole... I told you to stop calling me that. It feels so cold and formal. Ugh. Come on. What did we just talk about the other day? But... Soon enough we'll be equals, you know? Calling me boss won't be an accurate description anymore. So, why not get used to calling me by my name starting now? Equals, huh? I mean... That's only if I succeed in finding the criminal, right? Row, row. Row, row? That was just a figure of speech. You really think the chief will go back on his word after all the hard work you put into these past years? Now let's try again. Morning, Ro. Morning, Aslan. Nailed it. That wasn't so hard, was it? I guess not. This guy doesn't look like a cop. Like, I feel like there's gotta be a uniform that includes no jewelry, right? Except for maybe a wedding band. You do not look like a cop, sir. To think the bundle of en energy is my boss, although I see him almost every day, it's very hard to believe sometimes. Unless he's using his out of this world analytical skills, that is. He's not the chief of the criminal investigations department for nothing. And once today's over, I'm gonna work alongside him as the fellow detective from now on. No more makes assistant. So where did we leave off yesterday? There was a lead on Tiger's possible whereabouts. Ah, that's right. Any news on that regard? Unfortunately, just another person claiming to be him. God, what is wrong with these people? Do they seriously think serial killers are a joke? As if I didn't have enough already with the dumbasses ringing the headquarters thinking they figured out the culprit just because they read Murder on the Orient Express. There are all sorts of people in this world. No kidding. Ugh. I guess I can see the charm in claiming to be a defender of justice. It's just not the right way. A murderer is still a murderer. God, he can get scary sometimes. Oh, okay, I wasn't just making it up. His eyes did change color. <laughs> okay. Well, on the bright side, we do know quite a few important details regarding Tiger, don't you think? He's a man, possibly in his late, tw late 20s to early 30s, with outstanding physical capabilities 
He always uses a sharp object as his killing method, most likely a knife. He's bound to use some sort of camouflage or disguise to lower people's guards. And I take out an envelope for my satchel. He always leaves a calling card. How did you get that? Shouldn't forensics be analyzing it? Oh, they are, along with everything else at the crime scene. This is just a replica that I asked them to make for us. Do they do that? I'm afraid I don't follow. I have a plan, Aslan. Hear me out, okay? Go ahead. We should make a copycat crime. Oh, okay, what? Not a real one, of course, just something that will trick Tiger into coming our way. We can prepare a fake murder and use this replica to alert the media that Tiger struck again. If this was just any other killer, I doubt it'd work, but this is Tiger we're talking about. Someone with such a strong sense of justice won't tolerate his name being dragged through the mud. Even if he knows this is a... You're a genius, Roro. Ah. Aslan grabs my shoulders. Before being a killer, Tiger is a prideful guy. If he finds out that the police no less is trying to ruin his name, he'll lose his mind. Before I can give an answer, Aslan takes the calling card replica out of my hands. In fact, why don't we go even further and make the chief a fake target? Eh, you think he'll agree to it? If it's for a good cause, he won't mind. And I'd consider catching a serial killer who's been a pain in our asses for the last few months to be a good cause, no? Well, when you put it like that, probably, yeah. Bravo. Should I contact the chief now, then? Nah, don't fret. I'll take care of everything. Are you sure? Yep. I'm not the leader of this criminal investigations department for nothing. Let Boss show you what he's made of before you... Let Boss show you he's made of before you can't call me that anymore. Why did my brain just die for a second? <laughs> okay. When should we put that plan in motion then? Hmm, this evening? That seems really quick. What, are you serious? The faster the better, right? We don't know when Tiger will strike again after all. Not to mention the amount of time he takes from murder to murder is getting shorter. That's true. Can we actually do it? Okay, got it. I'll help with some details we might need to make the story more believable. I even know someone from Target News Agency. From the Target News Agency? who will get here at the drop of a hat once we call him. Good, Roro. What would I do without you? Oh god, Roro. God, Roro. You'd be hopeless. <laughs> you got me there. Okay, I'll go on ahead with the other preparations then. Yep, see you later, Aslan. Ta-ta. Aslan starts to walk away towards the hallway until something makes him stop in his tracks. He comes back. Ro. Yes? Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Smell you later, partner. What a weird morning it's been. Has it? Because it sounds like this is all normal to you. So why is it weird? Well, no matter. Let's get to work. It's just your normal friends being normal weirdos. Whew, time goes by fast when you're concentrating. I wonder if Aslan's already finished with the preparations. I only need to call Patrick for the scoop and we'll be all set. Maybe I could get some coffee from the machine on the second floor in the meantime. Ugh. I'll never get used to these horrible orange stripes on the wall. Who the hell designed this building? Thank God I don't have to see them unless I'm moving around from floor to floor. Anyway, coffee. Coffee. Is this the guy from earlier? Is his hair a different color? Huh? Who's that? I don't think he's from this division. Wait a second, he seems familiar. When I start approaching him, the red-haired man makes eye contact. Fuck. What? Hey! Uh... What the? Oh, just my phone. I don't know. I think that if I saw somebody running away from me, if I was a police officer working in a police building, and then somebody is like, ah, fucking runs off, I'd be like, 
no, you're suspicious. Come back and explain. <laughs> right? I'm not crazy, right? Aslan, Rogue, could you fetch the chief from his office? Tell him we're ready to move the plan along. Sure thing. Okay, no time for distractions. Let's head to the chief's office. Chief Barros, we're ready for the... Hmm? Where is he? That's odd. It smells like blood. Please tell me this is a joke. He couldn't have been... No, snap out of it, Ro. You've got to stop assuming the worst every single time. Let's just make sure first. I take one step, and then another. And another. And another. Until I'm right next to his desk. Rule of three, bud. Rule of three. When I look behind it, sprawled on the floor over a small pool of blood, lies a small card with the image of a tiger's eye and the unmoving corpse of Arden Burroughs, the former chief of police. I fucking knew it. Why are you here, bud? What the hell? A red-haired man comes out from the cupboard on the right side. Why did you run in here and hide? A red-haired man comes out from the cupboard on the right side of the desk. This guy was the one on the street. I knew I recognized him from somewhere. He just put on a wig and some makeup to cover his burn scar. You police moron, set me up! Uh, what? And if he's here, there's no one else he could be but Tiger. Hooray! You earn a fucking gold star. Now you better tell me what the fuck is going Did you on. Kill this guy to try and pin it on me. Uh, nah. Oh, honey, you shouldn't have. Why is he always yelling? I'm not into it. <laughs> Stressing me out. Uh, ex fucking excuse me. You're the one who killed him. Asshole! I can't believe you'd. Stoop solo for a fake target. Uh. Oh, now he's a fake target, isn't he? How convenient. Let's kill an innocent man. Blame it on Tiger. Surely no one will notice. I have standards, dipshit. Oh, yeah. Because killing is so righteous. <laughs> That's cute, coming from a member of the police. This fucker. I hate that I can't deny that. Okay, let's suppose for a second that he he's actually telling the truth. Who would actually believe that? Even if you didn't kill him, you don't exactly have a clean record. Like seriously, the scene is pretty damning for both of us. Look, I... Over there! Ah, oh, shit. A number of officers enter the office. I can see a few colleagues peeking from the door's entrance as well, including Carl. So it's true. Unbelievable. It's just as Mr. King said. What? Put your hands in the air. Reluctantly, Tiger does as he said. Can't beat a gun after all. Tiger, you're under arrest for the murder of Arden Burroughs and several other people. You have the right to remain silent. One of the officers handcuffs Tiger's wrists and starts leading him towards the door. Make way, make way. This man is dangerous. Before Tiger disappears from my field of view, he glares at me one last time. You won't forget this. What are you gonna do about it, punk ass bitch? Keep walking! Hey! I get it already! Once they're out of sight, I turn to the remaining officer in the room. Hey, what did you mean before? Did you know the chief was murdered even before you came here? He scowls. Playing dumb won't help you, traitor. What? What? What do you mean, traitor? I'm a detective. There's no way to- that's no way to treat your superior. The officer ignores me and points his gun at me. What the fuck? Aslan! Where's Aslan? That's Mr. King to you. Oh, what the hell? What? And considering your involvement in this, the only place you belong is the filth- is a filthy jail. Mix Darby. This can't be happening. What? What are you talking about, involvement? I came here to get the chief just like you told me. Didn't we plan to make him a fake target just this morning so that Tiger would make his appearance tonight? For heaven's sake, Darby. How would I even accomplish that in such a short time? 
To think you would resort to spouting fallacies and nonsense the moment you get cornered. I never expected this from you. No, I... Then again, I never expected you to be Tiger's accomplice either. The way you knew so much about him? I should have seen the signs. No. No, I was just doing my job. Please take them to the detention center. It can't be. Right away, Mr. King. It isn't true. Someone tell me it isn't true. Roe Darby, you're under arrest for being an accompli accomplice to a serial killer in the murder of Arden Burroughs. What the hell is going on? Though I can't stop knocking my knees together, my feet are stuck to the floor. I don't even register the words coming at me, just the cold metal of the cuffs against my skin. My legs inevitably start moving when I feel a rough tug on my wrists in order to make me walk. Just a moment, officer. Aslan approaches me and leans in, as if he wants to whisper something. F thanks for your cooperation, partner. What the hell? This guy? What the hell? Why was he faking it so hard earlier? This fucker. This fucker! He was planning to set me up from the very beginning. But why? With my plan! You son of a bitch! My sudden outburst catches everyone off guard. The officer, my colleagues, Carl, all except for him. I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill you! No matter how much I struggle, no matter how much I scream and flail, I keep being carried off while Aslan grins sardonically. For a second, I thought that was going to be the end of the demo. Ugh. Stay here. Right after shoving me like I'm vermin, uh, the vermin of the earth, the officer closes the door. Where would I even go, dumbass? Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Tiger. Not. Please make your acquaintance, dipshit. Wait, why did they put us in the same detention cell? How the fuck should I know? It's not like I'm happy about it either. You're the little dipshit who set me up after all. Oh my god, can you fucking stop that? I already told you it wasn't me. You think I was born yesterday? A lot of people in the police force are fucking stupid, but I know a damn smartass when I see one. You and that pompous asshole who acts like he's got a lion's mane up his ass. What? Both of you set me up. You're half right. Uh, what? The initial plan was to lay a trap for you with a fake target. It was originally my idea. Not gonna deny that. But judging from the fact that you got here so quickly without knowing what the hell was going on, and how everyone thought the chief was dead even before coming into the room... I dig my nails into my hands. That bastard must have murdered him and planned to pin the crime on both of us. Ah. And people say I'm a douchebag. Well, you are a killer, even if you say you're doing it for greater good. Okay. I won't deny it. Bro, they could be recording right now. I'm surprised you're not losing your shit over all of this, especially considered how you acted before. I mean, even I'm freaking a freaking mess right now. I thought you'd be angrier. Oh, make no mistake, I'm seething. <laughs> Don't sound so happy about it. But I need to cool my head if I want to get out of here and murder that fucking scumbag. Uh... No, don't go around killing people. It's against my moral code. <laughs> so why would, why are these my options? I don't like any of these options. Is there like a middle one where it's like, yeah, let's get out of here. Um, whatever, not if I kill him first. That seems like the most inflammatory one. Holy shit! Did that bastard awaken a beast without knowing? Still, it's too early to think about how we're gonna deal with him. We can't do anything while we're stuck here. Dipshit. Ugh, you're not wrong there, dipshit. Can you stop calling that? My name's Ro. Well, it 
Excuse me, princess. He reminds me of Sonic. <laughs> I don't know why. Patience, real patience. You can always punch him later. He must be angry because I'm still technically part of the reason he's here. Speaking of names, I'm guessing Tiger's not your real name either, right? No shit. I swear to God, if you keep up with this hot and cold attitude, I'm gonna start calling you dickhead for the rest of your life. Fine. The name's Oz. Happy now? No. It's a start. <sighs> Whatever. So, Oz. We seem to have no... We definitely got off on the wrong foot. Well, um... I wonder why. But if we both want to get revenge on that walking garbage, we need to cooperate. Work together. Tell you what, Bambi. Bambi? If you can use that giant brain of yours to get us the hell out of here, I'm game. How the hell would I do anything? I even know someone out there who can help us. Oh, you've got yourself a deal. Cool. What, what's the plan? After discussing the new plan, we wait for a certain someone to show up. Oz nods at me, and I get into position. It's showtime. I lie on the floor and close my eyes. Alright, you two, time for your meal, but no funny bit. Hey, what happened? <sighs> what do you think happened, moron? Of course they fucking collapsed. But, but why? Shit, for the love of... So much for being righteous... All you cops are f the fucking same. I need to call for a- Hey! You can't leave them alone, asshole! What if they die? What? Die? Oh god, they didn't train me for this. The guard touches my neck with two of his fingers to feel my pulse. I'll just call someone. He starts fiddling with his clothes. Hold on. Didn't survey this catch this on cam- Look. What a fucking moron. I'm glad I remembered he was the one on duty today. How is someone this dumb on the police force? Well, he's very athletic, reliable, kind-hearted. I shouldn't have asked. After nabbing the key from the guard and opening our handcuffs, we proceed to undress him so that Oz can put on his clothes. Once we cuff him, Oz takes off his red wig and smudges off his makeup. Okay. All yours. I untie the hairband on the wig and put it on. Those cameras make me nervous. Are you absolutely sure they're not working right now? Yeah, don't worry. The memory's full. How do you know? Little Carl Renard. I'll tell you later. Alright, we definitely still can't exit through the entrance, even with the cameras out of the way. Hmm, but the second floor might be doable. Sounds good to me. I just... Hope you don't leave me behind. Unlike the Lion Trash King, I'm not a fucking traitor, Bambi. Okay. Thanks. <sighs> he. <laughs> Who? <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> guts, Bambi. I'll give you that. You're not so bad yourself. I can't believe we jumped from a window on the second floor and fucking survived. In fact, no matter how good or bad my plan was, I can't believe we even managed to sneak well enough to go unnoticed. Was our security always this lax? It actually kind of irritates me how easily we were able to escape. But oh well. I'm not part of the police anymore. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he kind of can't be. I thought that was just a shadow on his face. I didn't know it was like a Zubo-style burn mark. <laughs> okay, here we are. For the first time since we stopped running, I take a look at the place Oz has brought us to. And I immediately recognize it. You've got to be kidding me. Bambi! For fuck's sake, Bambi, move your ass already. Arthur's already not going to like this. But we've really got no other choice. Alright, lead the way. Who would have thought? Of all places, a bear-themed cafe. To be continued. Oh, wow! That's not where I was expecting the demo to end at all. Interesting. 
Yeah, other than like some proofreading, I would say this was pretty good. Um, I'm interested to see how this goes. I can't imagine it's gonna end well for our main character ever. Like, I can't imagine how that's gonna end. <laughs> but it did grow on me a little bit at the end there. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to support the creator on Itch.io so that they finish making this game and we can get a full release, all right? Thank you everyone for coming out and playing with me. I had a ton of fun, I hope you did too. Make sure to stretch, drink some water, take care of yourselves, and I'll see y'all in the next one, all right?